you know, speak with the scriptures first. All right. James chapter five. So last chapter. James chapter five and verse. Hey, uh, we'll start at 10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who was spoken in the name of Yahweh by Shem Shai for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Because you're already going to go through th different things in the truth. Aside from the vows you make. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not. So James like, man, please don't do that. You know, don't do that, bro. You know, that's what he's saying. You know? Because you already going to go do um. You're already going to go through different things in the truth. All right. You're going to go through different things anyway. OK, we got to make different things right. We got to make everything right between us and your how about you shot anyway. You know, you're going to have to do that regardless just by you being in the truth. You know. So don't add to that burden. Cause it's because it's you know the truth it, it can uh be burdensome at times because of the um the restrictions in the truth, you know, because we're gonna deal with the brother's question, all right. You know, um, and I'm gonna balance it out. I'm I'm not saying that the truth is a burden, I'm not saying it, you know, it's just that um with the truth does come difficulty. Okay, yeah, how was Shah did say his yoke is easy, his burden is light. You know, it could be way worse. The things we go through could be way worse. But just, just so you can understand what we're involved in, the truth does come with suffering. You know, so St. James right here, he's like, man, man, don't do that, bro. Don't make no vow. Don't make a vow. All right. You not already committed yourself to your how about Shimei Shai by you believing in your how Shai, by you believing in this truth now. You know, you already committed. That's a vow in itself. But above all things, my brethren swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth. He, he's quoting what Yahweh Shah said. Because James, he's one of the 12. He was there with Yahweh Shah. So, he, you know, he's pretty much reiterating the same thing the Lord said, man. You know? Swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your... Yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation, because the Lord could kill us. We don't want that, you know, but just, the, you know, the severity of a vow. And if the Lord jacking you up behind you not keeping the vow, that's him showing you there is grace and mercy, because he could have took us out when we didn't fully, you know, do it. But, but he's reminding you, like, when you're getting jacked up behind you not doing it, there's a reminder, okay, do it now. Now you need to do it. You know? Now, I made a point, right? I had said how um, when you came in the truth, you, you've already made a vow to you. How about you? I was shy. Because long story short, dealing with the brother's question, I'm not going to say the brother's name, Okay. I'm not going to put his name out there. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, brother keeps up with the live streams, you know? Okay. Um, you know, brother, he's a believer. But basically he said that he made a, uh, a lifelong Nazarite vow, which I made something similar. Okay. Um, it's not quite the Nazarite vow, but I did something similar. A very foolish mistake on my end. I'm not saying what the brother did you know, was wrong, you know, but I can tell you based off of my experience with the vow I made, I would never recommend it. As many times when um, I regret I made that vow, 
you know, because I've had many times in my walk where I want to drink, you know, and different things like that. Only exception now when it came to the vow that I made is I drink during the Passover so I can properly keep the Passover. But other than that, I'm, I'm not messing with the uh, the wine, the strong drink, you know. I don't even eat grapes, man. You know, I, I left all that alone because basically when I made the vow I made, going back to, uh, you know, 2009, when I had, you know, visited Puerto Rico, that's basically um around the time I, I made that vow, you know. Every, you know, every once in a while, I tell the uh, the story about it, you know. But long story short, when uh, when me and my brother got back from uh, Puerto Rico, that's when I made the vow. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, hey, you, you see how the Lord will pretty much rescue you. You know, like, you know, you, you see how the Lord pretty much got you out of a bad situation. You know, because long story short, me and my brother could have been stuck over there. And, you know, like in so many words. But the Lord had some uh, some Benjaminites help us out, you know, judging by their accent and, you know, just, like, you know, their man mannerisms, judging by their spirit. They were Benjamin, you know, I'm not sure if they were Jamaican or Trinidadian, but, you know, there were some Benjaminites. They just so happened to be in Puerto Rico and, you know, they helped us out, you know, you know, what I'm saying because basically it, it was um, it was a situation where. We weren't able to get to the airport by ourselves, you know, so they had end up driving us, something like that. I vaguely remember, you know, every single detail, but that's pretty much what it, what happened, you know? Because we ended up, while, while I say me, I ain't gonna talk about my brother, I ended up doing too much in Puerto Rico. So, you know, I blamed it on the alcohol, you know? <laughs> they were damn um, Jamie Foxx song, you know? But then you realize when you, when you do particular things, but then you stop it, you realize it wasn't that particular thing you was doing. Really, it was you. You know, you can't blame it on something you was doing. You know, really, it's just that at that time, you were doing too much, you know? So long story short, after we got back from PR, we got back to the States, which Puerto Rico damn near part of the U.S. anyway, because, you know, it's a commonwealth of the U.S. That's why you don't need a passport. When we got back, though, you know, I, I made the vow, you know, and I got all into it, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I got real intimate and detailed with that vow, you know? You know what I'm saying? So um, to make a long story short, I understand where this brother's coming from. You know, brother asked that question, you know. Now, mine isn't the Nazarite per se, you know, but, you know, but it's close, though, because the, the vow I made was um, I wasn't going to drink into the kingdom pretty much but then you know after being in the truth for a little bit not a long time but then years go by and we still here you like man damn you know like you start to <laughs> like you know which like man you know I, I didn't realize like golly and now you know we still here we're we gonna get up out of here soon but you know you'll have those moments where like man damn like you know like you'll want to drink you know you you know you'll get around brothers you know and you know, the brothers may be sipping, stuff like that. And brothers may, you know, accommodate you. You know, brothers see that you don't drink. So, you know, brothers give you something that you can drink that's non-alcoholic. But just saying, like, a lot of different things we do can be unnecessary. You know? Like, you know, them vows, a lot of them are unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like St. James said, you know, he's one of the 12. Don't, don't do that, bro. Just, hey, leave it alone. You know, think twice. Think about what your how was I said. Swear not at all. Now, for brothers that have done it already, well, now it is what it is. There, there's grace and mercy, though. You know, um, you know, it, it ultimately pray to the Lord. You know, pray to the Lord about it. But if He's been jacking you up behind you not doing it, that that may mean that you need to keep it to the best of your ability. You know. We're not perfect, but you do it to the best of your ability. So um, let's see here. We read that in James. Now I want to get this in. Uh, I'm going to get this in Genesis 28 because our forefather Jacob, he made a vow, you know. Vows are biblical. 
you know, that they're scriptural. Our forefathers, they made vows. Which a footnote, we are our forefathers coming back, you know. And I'm going to say this real quick. I speak as a man. I speak. Um, I'm speaking by experience, 